guys, for this one, we are going to be looking at IXL U8, but that's uh, purely to lead us through a new section 6.2 on substitution for Algebra 1. And when I say substitution, we've previously discussed how you can solve a system of equations using different methods. So we've talked about graphing before, now we're going to talk about this new method, substitution. Um, we've substituted in numbers for variables in the past, but we're going to take that just a little bit further to help us solve for these specific variables. And if you do remember from um, graphing, our system is considered solved when we have an x and a y value. That works for both of them. So let's go ahead and start into this, and then this is kind of what we'll use as our example problems. So the first one here gives us two equations. We've already talked about graphing, but if we look at these, they're not already in slope-intercept form, so graphing might not be uh, the perfect way to go. And for a lot of these, if we were to graph them, that would be more time-consuming and potentially less accurate if they don't cross at an integer point at a whole number. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what is given. I have a full equation on the top here. The one on bottom is a little bit more simple, it's just x equals 8. What we're looking for in substitution is any time we have a single variable, x or y, or any other variable in another problem, the equal sign, and then everything else on the other side. We actually have that here. If we didn't have it here, our goal, if we were doing substitution, would be to get one of those variables by itself, and then we can proceed. So once I have one of the variables by itself, I'm going to take everything on the other side, so that's just the 8 in this case. And because this is x equals, I'm going to plug it in anytime I see x in the other equation. So my top equation is going to change now from negative x to negative 8. I'm still going to keep everything else the same, so plus 2y and equals negative uh, 18. So from here I can solve for one variable now because I only have a y here I got rid of the x. So that's kind of the reason we're substituting, we're eliminating one of the variables so we can solve for the other one. I would now add 8 to both sides, get 2y equals, that's going to give me negative 10, and then, here, let's fix this negative sign a little bit. There we go. Now I can divide by 2 on both sides, and I would get y equals negative 5. So now I know what y is. Remember, this is x. If this is an ordered pair, this is y. We need both things for this to be solved. So y was negative 5, we just found that. The nice thing in this problem is it tells us the x right off the bat is 8. If it didn't give us that, we would have to take this and plug it back in, and then solve for x, kind of do it in reverse. But we'll go ahead and hit submit there and make sure we're on the same page. Awesome. Okay, let's jump forward a little bit and see if we can't find something a little different. Okay, so now if you look at this, uh, if we're using substitution, I said I want one of the variables by itself. In this one, we actually have both by themselves. So you could think about this two different ways, but it would end up giving you the same thing. So let's say on the bottom here, I have y equals all of this. Well, I can take all of that that I just underlined and plug it in for y in the other equation. When I do that, if I write it out, I'm now going to have that negative 3x minus 10, so the underlined part is this, the equal sign, and then I'm going to have 3x plus 8 on the other side. So that's the right hand side here. So I took this and I substituted it in for y. Now that I have this, I can solve like it's any other equation. I just have x as my only variable now. Even though I have two x's, I can combine. And now I can solve for x. 
So let's go ahead and add 3x to both sides. So that's going to move all the x's to the right hand side. I'll have negative 10 left over. I'll have an equal sign. Then I'll have, now it'll be 6x and a plus 8. From here I want to get x by itself. So I can subtract 8 from both sides, giving me negative 18 equals 6x. And then I'm going to have one more step here to divide both sides by 6. So that would give me x equals negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. So remember we said if this is an ordered pair, that's my x value, that's my y value. So we just solved for x, so negative 3 is going to go in this first box. Unlike the last problem, it didn't give us y, so we're going to have to find that still. What I can do though, take this answer I just found, plug it in for x in either one of these starting equations. It doesn't matter which one. Sometimes one will be easier than the other, but both will work out. I'm going to go with this top one because I want to avoid any negatives down here. So now I'm going to rewrite that. It's going to be y equals 3 times, instead of x, I'm going to use what I just found of negative 3. And then I also have that plus 8 at the end. So now I'll have y equals 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. I still have the plus 8. And then finally, y equals negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. So that's going to go in my other box now. So just uh, to recap, we want both of those because if we plugged in this x and y for both equations, it would solve both. So that also tells me if I wanted to graph these lines, and this is actually one that is in slope intercept form, so you could probably try this if you wanted to. If you were to graph these in slope intercept form, this is the coordinate where those two lines would cross. So it holds true no matter if you do graphing or substitution. Both are going to work out here. If we wanted to, let's say, test a number, let's say they give you this coordinate and they want to know if it works, you would take negative 3 and plug it in for both x's, negative 1, plug it in for both y's. Okay, so let's jump forward and see if there's anything else before we wrap up. So that's pretty similar to the previous one. Okay, uh, this is going to be the most challenging one so far, and this will probably be the last thing we look at. Unlike the others, we don't have any variable by itself here. So this is where at the beginning I mentioned I need to get one of those variables by itself. For me, I'm going to look and see my y's and my x's, and it's going to stick out to me that this x doesn't have any number in front of it other than maybe a 1. So it's going to be the easiest thing to get by itself. To get it by itself, I need to move this 2y over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides, and now it'll look like this. x equals, that'll be a negative 2y because we subtracted it. And then that 19 stays a negative, it keeps that sign. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that new one we came up with instead of this old one. If they're equal, we just move some stuff around. So now what I can do is I can take everything that x is equal to, so that's all this that I'm going to underline in red, and I'm going to plug it in for x right here. So what that's going to look like, I'm still going to have negative 4 times, instead of x, I'm going to plug in all this right here. So that's negative 2y and then minus 19. So now because there's two terms in here, I'm going to have distribution. But it's all things that we've done before. I'm still going to have a plus 8y looking at the original equation still going to have equals negative 20. So the benefit of that substitution was now I don't have x in this problem, so I can eventually put all the y's together and solve for it. So let's go ahead and distribute here. Negative 4 times negative 2 is going to give me 8y. 
and then negative 4 times negative 19. Oh man, I might have to get the calculator out for that one. It's going to give me 76. I like to think I could have did that in my head, but I'm not going to ruin the problem by getting that wrong. I tell you guys you can use the calculator, so I'm going to give myself 1. I still have the plus 8y equals negative 20. I see on the left hand side there 8y and 8y can combine to 16y. I still have the plus 76 equals negative 20. From here I would subtract 76 from both sides. So I'm going to have a negative 20 minus 76. It's going to give me a negative 96 on the right side equals 16y still. So I just subtracted that uh, 76. Now if I divide both sides by 16, negative 96 divided by uh, 16 is going to give me negative 6. So that's part of my solution now, negative 6. And then we don't know what x is, so I can plug back into any of these equations with the value we just found to solve for x. This one we made already has x by itself, so I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to have negative 2 times, instead of y, negative 6 minus 19, and that's all equal to x. So once I simplify that, I'll know what x is equal to. Negative 2 times negative 6 is 12. 12 minus 19 is going to give me a negative 7. So that would go in my other box there. Awesome. Okay, so um, those are the different kind of levels of difficulty you'll see. Um, for the assignment I'm going to have my Algebra 1 class doing today, it's not going to be quite as difficult as that last one, but that'll help you um, kind of get started. Pieces of that will help you. Okay, if this was helpful, give it a like. Feel free to subscribe for the uh, future content, and we'll see you guys.